All righty, so I want to ask you guys a question. Does anybody happen to know what is the most common job for a male in the United States today? Anybody know? Salesman. No. Go ahead. Construction? No. Go ahead. Uh, truck driver? Driver. Yes, driver. Not just truck driver, driver. Yep. Driver is the most common job for a male in the United States today. Guess what's coming real soon? Self-driving. You got it. Driverless cars. Oh, my God. What is the most common job for a female? In the United States today, clerk or server, you are seeing the kiosks already, aren't you? You are seeing the kiosks already. There is a huge shift in this country happening. It will happen in other countries also, but not as fast. It will happen here very fast and is happening already. Think about that. Millions of people who were drivers, no more. Millions of people who were servers and clerks, no more. Oh, my God. But people say, wait a minute, Larry, that's okay, that's normal. Happens all the time. These are low skill jobs, people who don't have college degrees. Who cares about that? Not me, I'm going to college, I'm going to Brown. What do I care? What do I care? <laughs> right, who cares? I'm good. Anybody know what's happening on Wall Street right now? This city, Wall Street, right now. Layoff upon layoff upon layoff. Why? What's taking all these jobs? All these really smart analyst jobs. You got it. AI, artificial intelligence, taking all those jobs too. Computer does it a lot faster. And now we just got to pay three techs versus six analysts. No bonuses for, for my computer. Big bonuses for analysts. No bonuses for computers. So now even those who went to, who went to actual school and learned stuff, huh, going away problem even more for you guys who want to say be a lawyer what's 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 dealing with that how, how are we dealing with the lawyer issues go ahead absolutely correct yes now the 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 grunt work jobs that lawyers used to have to be trained to do is now being done by a computer by ai again and again and again not just that basic forms you need all computer generated used to be written up by a lawyer not anymore not computer write it up all these jobs we thought, well, I'm safe if I go to college. I'm safe if I get educated. I'm safe if I get credentialed. I'm safe if I do that. No, there is literally now a machine that lays bricks. I'm not joking. Even a bricklayer may have a problem. There's literally a machine that will lay, that will lay bricks across a wall and create a, a wall faster than people. Wow. All bad news. It's all over. Run away. No, of course not. AI and technology is one of our biggest issues we're dealing with. Believe it or not, not immigration, right? That's not the issue. I know we're all upset about immigration. I'm not saying we should or shouldn't handle immigration, but that's not our biggest issue. Our biggest issue that will disrupt us, that will tear our country apart, is technology. Easy though. If you're on the left, you tend to blame the corporation. They're evil. If you're on the right, it's the immigrant. He or she's evil. Neither is evil. The issue is we are having disruption and we have to deal with it. All right. Oh my God, the world's ending. No, it's happened before. Here's the issue. When technology happens, we have to adjust. Whether that was you know, the horse and buggy or whatever it was, or the car or the computer, doesn't really matter. But I want you to think about AI and technology like chess. Anybody remember back in the day when they first made the chess computer games? Some of you in the back with some gray hair like me may have remembered those days, right? And in those days, if you had a chess computer uh, game, a chess, the computer plays against a human, very often the human would win. In fact, in the early days, the human, the chess master always won in the early game, in the early days. All of a sudden then, human meets chess, human meets computer, I'm sorry. Then all of a sudden, computer beats human. Now, almost always the computer beats human. Almost always, the chess master, the computer almost always wins. But what beats the computer? Anybody know? Yeah. Well, what beats AI? No, AI usually beats human. Mm -hmm. What beats AI? Kind of an exponential, right? Yeah, Human plus AI. Mm -hmm. Human plus AI beats AI. So our goal is to understand how we can harness the technology, not to be afraid of it, but to work with it, to harness it, to work with it, because then we beat the AI. If we simply put AI against AI, where's the human? That's a real bad idea, 
right? That's the Terminator, right? That's for you guys, man, that's Skynet takes over the entire world, right? That's AI versus I, AI versus AI. Yeah. Yes, that's what it is, exactly right, yes. Human plus AI beats AI again and again and again and again, right? When all of a sudden we have the plow, we have a horse behind the plow, well, that's awesome. But what's more effective than a horse with a plow? No, but at that time frame, when you don't have a, when you don't have a tractor, when you don't have a tractor, right? You just have a horse and a plow. You put the plow into the horse. Horse, go. That's effective. It's good. What's more effective? When a person is controlling the horse, yes, that's even more effective. Exactly correct. This has happened before. This isn't the first time. It looks different. Yeah, it's the same. So once you realize that, that's what's happening with us. Now you might say, but Larry, that makes sense. But well, what if I want to be like a plumber? Come on. I want to be a plumber. Yeah, I said I wanted to be a plumber in my next class. Yes. Right? Look, the world needs plumbers. Right? They're a good job. It's profession. You decide, I don't want to go to college and go crazy. I just want to be a plumber. I like being a plumber. It's a good deal. It's a good job. Make good money. I agree. If you want to be a plumber, go be a plumber. So this doesn't apply to you, right? No, it does. Oh, yes, it does. Absolutely, it does. It doesn't matter if you want to be white collar, blue collar, whatever your job is, technology will affect you. Because now you want, be, you want to be a plumber. Awesome. Good for you. Now what happens? Wait a minute. I'm going to be a plumber. What technology is in your house versus your house versus your house? What technology must I use in each of those houses? How am I affected by my communication? Yeah, technology affects you too. So it doesn't matter where you want to be in your life. It doesn't matter what you choose to do. Most of you in this room will have at least five different careers. I'm trying it again. I didn't say five different jobs. That's not what I said. I said five different careers. I've got 30 years on all of you, and I've had three. Right? I've had three. How many have you had? Three, exactly. We've had three. We're a little older than you, a little bit. Right? We've had three. You guys will probably have five or more. Again, not five or more jobs, five or more careers. It's probably what you have. So wait a minute, Larry, are you telling me I'm going to have to learn a whole new career? I'm telling you no. I'm telling you to learn one important thing, leadership. Of everything I talked about just now, what solves it all? Leadership. That is what we have to worry about. In this room, you must start thinking about leadership. How will I lead? And I might say, well, Larry, it's easy. I'll go to school and I'll take a management course. Note what I didn't say. I didn't say manage. I didn't say manage. I said lead. And there's a difference. Managing is controlling process and controlling resources. And that's great. But guess what does that really well already? Computers. Computers. AI. They're outsourcing management now. Yes. So while management is valuable, you find finding computers do that very well too. Instead, you have to be able to lead. Leading is critical. Leading is very important because leading gets people to buy in. Leading is all about people wanting to volunteer to do. Leading is about freedom. It is about not me saying, do it because I said so. Right? But instead, do it because you know it's right. Do it because you want to. Do it because you're on the team. Do it because you get it. That's not easy to do. But if you lead well, you make it happen. There's a guy, his name was Wayne Germanian. He said years ago, I wrote a book years ago, and he said something, this is probably 20, 30 years ago. He said, if somebody who's your junior is doing exactly what you tell them to do, now you're sunk. Now you're finished. So what I don't want. Because again, I'm, we're, I run a plumbing company now, and you guys are my plumbers. And I say, go to a house uh, on Main Street, and they've got X, fix X. You go to house on Main Street, it's not X. It's X on the first floor, but it's Y on the second floor. So what do you do if you do what I told you? You fix X and walk away. That's what you do. You fix X, walk away. Did my job, boss. Thanks. Call me up. Larry, what happened? My plumbing is a disaster. You didn't fix anything. You guys are terrible. That's what happened. You told me to fix X. <laughs> but you saw Y was there. Yeah, but you didn't tell me to fix Y. That's management. Leadership is, when you get there, fix it. If you have a problem, tell me. Is that okay? You know what I just did. Is that okay? You get it? Yeah? Great. Now he gets there. He sees X. He sees Y. He's got X. He knows it. All good. He doesn't know why. So he does the right thing. He calls me up. Boss, I got Y here. What do I do? 
Now we're leading. Does that make sense? That's what we have to worry about. Because here's what I know. You are going to be able to be into fields that you don't know, that you don't understand, but you can still be successful. Understanding the exact hows and the details and the data, that's what computers do well. I don't know it, it's called Google. I don't know it, it's called YouTube. I don't know it, it's called call, text, email, my friend, the expert, whatever the case may be, right? That's what it's called. Now I get it, now I can lead it, I can make it happen. Does it make sense everybody? Mm -hmm. Leadership is key. Now here's a problem. People don't like what I'm saying. It's happening, they don't like it. But wait a minute, I'm a mid-level manager. I've been doing this 20 years. I've been doing this 30 years. Have you seen in this world today, maybe some of you know it, I'm sure some people in the back know this, there is a real big problem, a serious problem in the United States with age discrimination. Huge problem. You've probably seen it, yep, huge problem. People say, well, I've been doing this 30 years, how come I can't get a job? Because sadly, no one cares. They don't care. Unless you're going to perhaps academia, sometimes government, sometimes big business, some of those large institutions still care, but even a lot of those don't care as much anymore. They, they care more than other fields, but if you're not going to a large organization, academia, or into um, government, a lot of them don't care. I have 30 years doing this in a certain company. Oh, you're untrainable. So they think, oh, you're untrainable. Oh, you don't know the new stuff. Oh, you're stuck in your ways. Oh, you expect lots of money just for showing up. Oh, no. When you become a leader and a manager, you're not managing time. You're leading for results. But more importantly, leaders change behaviors, which change results. In your mind, you must start thinking about that. How can I change people's behaviors to get more value? How can I bring value to my organization? Not, I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm not saying you should do something for 10 years. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that can't be the basis for your success. I hope you guys go to great schools. Hope you do. But having that credential is not going to get you a job. Very clear. Not. It may get you an interview. It might. Yes. Credentials matter. Sitting in interviews. But when you get in front of those people, they're not going to say, oh, you have cool credentials. You're hired. Your mindset was perfect, by the way. You said, I'm going to work in an ER. That was exactly what you should say because you will have done something. You will have brought value, you will have done something. And you'll say, aha, Elon Musk once said, and I asked him, who do you hire? He said, I hire two types, two types of people. I hire those who have great grades from great schools and those who've done something. So I, I have to focus on the leadership piece. How do you get around it? Through leadership. Now, people who don't like that are getting angry. I don't like it, they're fighting it. It's a tech clash right now. Technology's bad, stealing our jobs. We don't like it. Technology is stupid. Get off your phone. Right? Seeing tech clash happen. And tech clash is happening because AI requires something. What does AI require to be successful? Go ahead. Big data. You got it. Big data. You got it. Without big data, there is no good AI. What do we what does it do to get big data? I've got to get you guys to give me data. Go ahead. Facebook, Google. Facebook, Google, yes. And there's actually a back a backlash against these people, right? Now everyone's mad at Facebook, right? Remember five years ago? Facebook's the greatest thing in the world. We love it. It's the awesomest thing. It's the future. Facebook, everything. Now it's like, that guy Zuckerberg's evil. All of a sudden, now it's bad. It's a backlash. There is a backlash against tech because tech requires big data. But not just that. You see it all the time. Not when you have big data. Who wants big data? Go ahead. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. Big data is awesome. Big data is great because not only can I target people, but now I can catch them. And that's critical. Government's really good at arresting people. Skills that go, all governments have that. They're really good at it. They're really good at arresting people. They're really good at that. Skills that they have. So, so yes, but big data makes it a whole lot easier, doesn't it? If I've got your fingerprints, if I've got your, your face print, if I've got you on video, if, I've, if I can, and if I'm a prosecutor, if I can find any single thing you've ever said that validates my case, I will pluck that thing from the bazillions of things you said that are against, that don't match, and I'll put that in, and you're going to jail. It makes it very easy to be a world where everybody's guilty, just decides on when I decide to target you. I'm gonna target you today. There you go. 
You guys are fine. I haven't taught it yet. Oh, you just made me angry. I don't like brown. Jail you go. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Actually, gone. oh, really? You're wearing black? Jail. <laughs> That's it. Gone. Once I target you, you're gone. So there's a backlash. And it's a valid backlash. It's valid. I want to be clear. It's a valid fear, a valid worry. Who's going to fix that? Almost. You got it right. You got it almost. We, yes. We, yes. The people in this room, you guys are going to be running things in 10, 20 years. You will be running things in 10, 20 years when this is hitting us the heaviest. When it's hitting us the heaviest, you will be in the middle of it. And you will decide, do I fall back to law or do I fall back to what you said, society? Always remember something. Law is a quick fix. It works short term every time. Law works short term every time. Short term, right? You're doing something bad. Put you in jail. You don't do it anymore. Yay, I win. But if society thinks that thing is okay, this just goes to the black market and it keeps happening. But we won't see it until later. Why? It's in the black market. We'll see it later. Short term, I'm a winner. You're in jail. No one else sees it. What a great leader I am. Long term, I've just failed. If I change society, I win. Remember, culture is stronger than law. Always, no exceptions. Culture is stronger than law. I'm not saying laws are bad and we shouldn't have laws. I'm not saying that. We want to make a real change. This is a cultural change. We must change society. And it is us. And those protests will work. Yes, if people get it. You're going to be in charge. And when people come to you and go, the world's going to do something. And when you pull out your iron fist, and say, I'm going to make laws and rules in my company where no one can do anything bad ever. You've just said, I'm going to have a short-term solution that will crush me in the long run. <laughs> You've just said that. To be clear, you just said that. It will crush me in the long run. But short-term, I'll feel awesome. You need to realize that. There is a backlash. It is happening now. You are the ones who deal with it. Here's my bit of advice. Don't get angry. Earlier today, you said, what are these organizations dumb? And what was my response? Do you remember? No. I, I said, no, they're, no, I, I said, they're human. Mm -hmm. That's what I said, they're human. This is natural. Please don't think people are dumb or crazy. Some are, but most aren't, mm -hmm. right? Most are not. There's regular people who are affected by their environment, who are affected by their culture, society. They are. You are the ones who must change that. You must say, this is happening. I'm not mad. I get it. You're human. Hey guys, let's move forward. Let's lead us through this. That's what I want. I want you to lead us through this. Make sense so far? Any questions or comments so far? I've been through a lot. You have something? Go ahead. Amazon is known for really doing that and focusing on these very little details and then over um, analyzing everything. So, I mean, so far they seem to be doing pretty well. Do you think that in the future this is going to cause backlash? Yes, I do. Right now, it's very good. Here's when it becomes a backlash, and it's kind of happening in a way. Anybody here imagining becoming a retailer? Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to become. Why would you? Exactly. Why would you? Yes. Like, look at that. You're scared. You're like, retail. Oh! <laughs> Literally, I thought she was going to jump out the window right now. <laughs> yes. Have you seen the retail problems now in, the, in, in this, just in New York City? Have you seen the ghost towns we have in certain neighborhoods? Right? You go outside of New York City, it's worse. Retail struggles. Why? Amazon. Right? Remember the, the, the bad backlash against Walmart? Still exists. That will happen with Amazon. I don't know when, but that will happen. Because here's the problem. Now you're having a, a situation where you have, you have a monopoly happening, but it's not a government monopoly. It's a natural monopoly. And it's a little off topic, but if you want to hear this, I'm happy. Do you guys want to hear about this? Yeah. A little bit off topic. But in business today, right? If you saw new, anybody wants to start a new business, in, years ago, Years ago, what would happen in business is someone would say, great, I'm going to invest in your business, whatever that business is, your bakery, insert thing here, right? Whatever I'm going to do. And I want to see some profit by the first year, and then maybe I'll give you some more money, or I'll get this other guy to give you some money, and then maybe we'll expand you, buy a second bakery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Not anymore. Not anymore. Now I give her money. I'm not going to make any money because her goal was not profit at all. But Go ahead. How do we, but how, it's great, yes, but how do we define growth in this case? Uh, it's expansion of your, uh, of, your? Uh, of your employees. Or no, your not, that's a bad thing. Brands, yeah. How do you define that, though? 
Not by sales. No. Not by, oh, almost. By like social media type stuff? By eyeballs. By market share. It's exactly what you care about. Market share. She is assumed to make zero profit because she only wants two things. One, two things only. One, to be innovative enough to where a big company buys her or to be niche enough to be a natural monopoly. That's it. That's what she cares about. Niche enough to become a natural monopoly, right? She's the only one who sells black shoes. No one else does. You put black shoes, it goes to her website. Oh my God, she's a monopoly in black shoes. Awesome. Or she's innovative enough where Amazon goes, oh, I got to buy her. So no one's making any money for years now. Remember Twitter? No money for years? That isn't the norm. No money for years. Why is that a problem? And so who cares? It's great. Here's why it's a problem. The normal investor has no idea what he's doing. He's still thinking from 30 years ago. He has no idea what he's doing. Now I mentioned something else earlier. This is kind of coming together. It's not really what I want to talk about, but I'm happy to talk about it if you want me to. Now you have all these people in finance who are being let go, who make big money, who are analysts and who are smart people and educated. What are they gonna go do? Work at McDonald's. What are they gonna do? Get a job somewhere, making one third of what they made with no bonus. They're afraid of that. Thank you, because they're analysts. You got it, you hit it perfectly. I'm an analyst and I got money. I'm gonna invest in the business. So I'm gonna do my, my analyze, I'm gonna analyze her. But when you have a, a leader today who's, who hits a home run, who does really well. Anybody know why? What's the common thread? Go ahead. Humanity. They understand. Yeah, I think they understand they're assembled with people. Yeah. Yes, you've hit it perfectly. It is a leadership piece. I can analyze her business model all day. It is irrelevant. It's relevant. Doesn't matter. The best, the best investors go, does she have the personality for? Does she get it? Is she resilient enough? Does she put the right people around her? Because I'll fix your business model. That's, I can do that. That's easy. But people still think, good business models. I put money into you. Business model's great. You're not, you're not an entrepreneur. You fail. You don't make money in the first year. You couldn't anyway. I'm mad. Problem. We're losing money. That's happening now. There's, a big, there's actually a bubble in investment right now. The VC world, venture capital world. I'm sorry if you guys know that. Venture capitalist world, angel investor world. Everyone's trying to put money into businesses because they're scared to start a business, so they invest, and they lose money. I have an app that'll give you a soda. Great, here's a million dollars. Boom, we lost money. Oh, what happened? Yeah, that's happening all the time. Another bubble we're happening. That's happening right now. So off, off topic, I'm sorry. But anyway, so when that's happening now. When is this happening? Yeah, it's, it, again, this is happening now. This is actually happening now, right? As we begin to invest in these things, right? How many times have you heard of an app and then it's gone? Yeah. Someone put money behind that, right? If you heard about the app, Someone put money behind it. He probably was, or she probably was an analyst off of Wall Street who got let go, right? They put money behind it, and now it's gone. If they, if they won, it got bought. If they won, didn't get bought, it's lost money. Happens all the time. So I'm not saying starting business is a bad idea. I'm not saying retail is a bad idea. What I'm saying is leadership matters. That's what I'm saying. Leadership matters. Remember something. The biggest companies today did not exist 30 years ago. Say it again. The biggest companies today did not exist 30 years ago. Didn't exist. Did not exist. Innovation, leadership. You don't innovate by following the same old rules. You don't innovate by managing. You innovate by leading. We okay with that idea? All right, sorry, keep going. Did I answer your question or no? Yeah, all right, good. All right, so next piece. With the big backlash, one of the critical pieces of you to think about is security. Security, period. Security, period. If you want to get into a field, security is a good idea. It's a good idea. And I don't just mean security like there's a guard at the, end, at the front of the room. That too. But more importantly, cybersecurity. It's more important. But guard in front of the room too. That's also good. People are always afraid. They are. People are always afraid. Always afraid. So security is good no matter what. But now cybersecurity is, is even better. Lots of people have security guard um, services that make a lot of money. Right? Guy in front of a door is also valuable. But there's lots of other ways of doing it, right? How about all the people right now who are putting all these apps in their homes? All of a sudden now, here I go. I've got this. I've got, you know, okay, Google or whatever in my home or Alexa, blah, 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 blah. Right? I got that in my home now, right? Who's, who's monitoring that? Yeah. 
You got it. Absolutely. You got the you got the baby cam, the nanny cam. You've got Alexa in your house. You've got one of those. You press the button, and now your refrigerator knows you don't have any milk anymore, so it tells you to order the milk. Right? <laughs> That's all the future. If you guys don't have that in your house now, you probably will. Right? You probably will have that in your apartment, or your house, something like that. Well, who's hacking that? Maybe. Yeah. Right? Where did you say he was from? Some guy. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yes. Or maybe your neighbor. Or maybe your neighbor. Or maybe some guy in Russia. If you can be involved in some kind of security, home run if you can. But not just security, also planning. Because you also want to take action, right? I, was, I spent many years in the Marine Corps, and I also dealt with counterterrorism. One thing you talk about is your actions will make you more secure. One of the things I talk about, and uh, Zach in the back, he also was in the military. That's your guard at Guantanamo Bay. And we know the same thing. When you, when you are doing certain things, you make things easier or harder as a target, right? So you, you, uh, there's, a, there's actually something someone said once, the reason why Donald Trump eats so often at fast food places, I hope this is true, I don't know if it's true or not, but I like the story either way. It was in the book. It was in the book? <laughs> ah, so maybe it's true. I don't know if it's true, but I love the story anyway, so it might be true. I, I'm gonna say it, letting you know that it may not be a true story. I love the idea anyway. The reason why he often eats at fast food places was because then people don't know where he's going to eat and he can't be poisoned. It's brilliant. Yes. Yes, it might not be true. I have no idea it's true. But it's a good story either way, right? So the concept's good, right? That if you change how you do things, if you change how you do you become a harder target. Your point about the guy in Russia. The guy in Russia doesn't care about your house. He cares about a house. Not your house, a house. If his house is easier to hack, well, then I hack his house. I just want a house. I don't care whose it is. I'm not going, I'm going to get his house. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I just want a house. So if you know how to plan for people or companies or organizations or groups that will make them more safe, this will also be good for your future. Does it make sense? I mean, you're going to work in an ER. You're going to have data. People are going to want that because that, of course, is going to be professional corporate espionage. Right? Same thing. That's not some guy in Russia. That's some guy from the other hospital group who wants to know what you know so they can compete against you. Boom, planning security, even with that. So it isn't just the guy in Russia, even though it may be. It could be some guy next door who just wants to make a quick buck, or it could be some big company who wants your data to, to supplement theirs. They got to put money into something. Why do it myself when you're doing it for me? I'll just steal yours, right? So that may be an issue also. So as I bring up here, it's at both the macro level and the micro level, both. Again, guy in front of the door, my cell phone, or my hospital group of 14 hospitals, right? Or my country, or my nation, or city, or state. All the same. And you may say, Larry, this is kind of challenging. It's difficult. It is, but it's your future. There's a huge advantage, though. If you notice, I mentioned blue collar. Remember I mentioned the blue collar guy? The guy who wants to be a plumber? This technology is also a great equalizer. It's an equalizer for blue collar to white collar, but also a gender equalizer. You can see that where, where ideas where it used to be totally all male dominated, the wave is here. The female wave is here. It hasn't arrived yet, but you can see it on the, on the horizon. You can see it coming. Right? The World Economic Summit, Davos, if I'm not mistaken, the economic uh, forum was hosted by two women. Never happened before. Never happened before. First time. The wave is here. Look at all uh, teen novels, the heroes, vast majority of women, vast majority of women. Right? Movies. More women heroes than ever. All Star Wars movies. All female heroine, heroes. All of them. I don't know if you guys watch Star Wars movies. But if you do, all, all women. The wave is here. Technology is making this more equal. But when you do that, there will also be a backlash for this. A backlash for people who are more traditional. Who will say, no, I'm a woman. I should be X, Y, or Z because my culture tells me so. You will find that happen. And if you're a woman who says that's not right, I'll ask you the same thing. Don't be angry. And we have a problem as women sometimes. See, I'm calling this a woman today. We have a problem as women sometimes that when we see some woman who is not advancing how we decide she should advance, we get angry. Why aren't you advancing? You're a woman not today. Sorry. See, gender, we're, quali we're making us equal today, right? Yeah. So why aren't you advancing? Why aren't you advancing the way I'm advancing? This goes back to the idea of leadership. This is back to the idea of freedom and liberty. 
if she doesn't want to advance, she shouldn't. The same way you find things more, more men doing traditionally women uh, um, jobs now, right? You find much more stay-at-home dads, much more of them now. Women and men, we can't be angry. You want to be a stay you're a man now. You want to be a stay-at-home dad? That's your thing. I'm not mad at you. Do you think? But more importantly, here's the biggest piece to understand. A woman by the name of Carol Hyatt told me something, and, she, and I never forgot it. She used to be an executive leadership coach heavily in the 80s and 90s. She said women were told a lie that you can have everything. You can't have everything. Not now. Not at once. You can't have everything. It's not at the same time. Not at the same time. But this goes for men too. You can't have everything at the same time, which is why many of us will have five different careers. And one of those careers might be raising a child. And one of those careers might be taking care of an elderly parent. One of those careers might be starting a business. One of those careers might be being an ER doctor. Many different things. So now he decides to be a stay-at-home dad for the next five years. That's just one career. He's got four left. He's got four left. She wants to raise her kids for five years. She then goes to become a doctor. Then goes back to raising kids for five years. Then goes starts a business. Happens all the time. My wife is one year younger than me. She's already started a business, raised kids, was an analyst on Wall Street. Already three careers. Right? Already. All three. This happens often. There will be an issue with gender. There will be a backlash. I'm asking you, when it's happening to you, when you see it, don't be angry. It's human. It's natural. Accept it. Are we okay on this? Mm -hmm. The last piece of disruption, as I mentioned, backlash. Double backlash. One gender and one also an actual just tech backlash. Here's the problem. When there is a backlash, when there is disruption, when people are angry, what usually happens right away? Come on, what happens? I'm mad. This happened. Do we? Say again? Sometimes, yeah. But as a culture, we're a culture now, right? Yeah. All in New York City, we're mad because retail is, right. is we don't, it's not right. Not in New York City. No. Yeah. We're mad because the retail industry is not doing well. Or we're mad because we don't get paid enough. Or we're mad because there aren't enough jobs. We blame it on someone. Yes, then. <laughs> Almost never strike. Ha no, but I hashtag. What does the country, what does the nation do? Someone says there ought to be a law. <laughs> Guaranteed. Someone says there ought to be a law. You said it, right? Yes. <laughs> we'll pass a law. Someone says it. Now, here's the problem with that. It's good and bad. It actually works. Passing a law is a short-term solution. That works in the short term. It always does. Short term, it works. Look, you guys know I'm a libertarian, right? Yeah. It's who I am. You know I'm a libertarian, right? So I am totally biased. I'll tell you up front, I'm completely biased. I know something. Law equals force. Never forget that. At the end of almost every law, there are some minor exceptions, but the end of almost every law is a guy or a gal with a gun who will put you in a prison, who will put you in a cage. Never forget that. At the end of any law, there are a couple minor exceptions, at the end of that is a guy or a girl with a gun who will put you in a cage. So, for, so law is force. Is force effective? Short term every time. It is a short term solution. I need money right now. Got a gun? Give me your wallet. I have money now, don't I? That was absolutely a short-term solution. That worked. I wanted money. I have money. That's a long-term problem, though, right? That is not going to end well for me, right? Or for you, or maybe both of us. Yeah. It's not going to end well, right? This is not going to end well. But did it work for my... Yeah, it did. Law is no different. Law is no different. It works short-term, right? We have a problem with drugs. The rest of everybody. Wow. The crime went, went down. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Good. Short term, that totally worked. Long term, we are still feeling the effects to this day on how bad the war on drugs has crushed us. But short term, home run. I'm asking you, when you were out there thinking about these problems, this disruption, you're going to see that. Don't think short term. And he's going to help us. He's going he's gonna to hurt us. You're going to see China is going to respond better to this than we will. Why? They can move quickly. 
you will see them. They will have short-term success faster than we will. They will. We can have two choices. One, look at China. They're doing great. Let's copy them. That's option one. And many people will choose that. Many people will choose that because it looks great. But there's a second option. Let them. We have a better way. Our way will, will be more disruption up front, but it will be a long-term solution. Right? If the culture changes, we win as permanent. If the laws change, it's short-term and then a fight afterwards. Does it make sense? China will, will, will absolutely quickly fix something and it will look great. They will struggle 20 years from now. They will struggle 30 years from now. They will struggle terribly. If we don't follow that, if we see it and say, uh-uh, that's what Larry said, short term, not gonna work. If we don't do it, we will be able to have a long-term solution. If we lead well, we lead by example. If we lead with communication, if we lead with empathy, to your point earlier, if we lead that way, people will get it. It will be real long-term solution. Gender issues should not be a civil war. Tech backlash should not be a civil war. It should simply be disruption within our communities until it equals out. That's what it should be. Thank you guys, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, any questions or comments on that? Go ahead. Oh, there, if our politicians are being elected based on their COVID results, how yes. do you expect us to change to make these long-term decisions? It is really hard. Yes, you're, you're right. And the sad part is we often want the short-term solution, right? But you, you see that happen in every presidential um, election, right? Every single time. I'm not just saying Donald Trump, him too. He is also guilty of this. Anything good happens once he gets elected, it's because I got elected, right? And every president does it, right? Him too, him louder, right? Because he's Trump, <laughs> he does it louder than the others. But they all do it, everyone. Oh, I'm president and this thing happened. <laughs> Therefore, see, I did it. As if anything that happened today was because of what the president said today. Maybe the price of Bitcoin because of that's about it. Nothing, nothing else changes but what the, what the president says today. Does that make sense? So you're right, it's a problem. What does that mean? Communicate, communicate, communicate. The best leaders do two things very well. They communicate and then they over communicate and they over communicate. And the second piece is they're okay being right later, not being right right now, right? The best leaders don't need to be right right now. You can be right later. It's tougher to be right later, but it's stronger and longer term, right? You've had this happen in your life when someone said, you know, you really should do so and so. You went, you're stupid. I'm never doing that. And he said, okay, whatevs. Then three months later, wow, that guy was right. I should have done that. You remember that, don't you? That guy was right. Oh, is that me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. All right, guys. Any other questions? Well, a big thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Hi, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Oh, awesome. All right. So I have a question for you. Does anybody here happen to know what is the most common job for a male in the United States today? Most common job for a male in the United States today? Driver. Most common job is a driver, right? Whether that's a taxi driver, a truck driver, a driver of some sort. What's coming with technology real soon here? Driverless cars. You got it. Whoops. That's a problem. How about for a woman, for a female in the United States, what's the most common job? Clerk slash server. Hmm. Have you seen the kiosks already? Everywhere you go, you see the kiosks already. You see them, don't you? The self-checkouts. You see them everywhere, don't you? In the kiosks, everywhere. Oh, my God. That's scary. Literally millions of jobs going away in the coming years. Gone. Gone. Oh, my God. Should we be more afraid of technology? Should we be more afraid of foreigners? Should we be more afraid of corporations? Technology. If you're on the left right now, you easily just go, ah, it's because big corporations are evil. That's the reason why I punish them. That'll work. Driverless cars still come. Kiosks still come. If you're on the right, those evil foreigners are taking our jobs. They're so bad. Stop them. 
Driver's cars still come. Kiosks still come. It isn't the key. The key is technology. We have to handle that, deal with that in the future. You, as a young and now, 18, 19, 20, 21, this is your number one issue to be concerned about. Well, there anything else. It's going to affect your job, your life now. But you're not 20, 21. You're 40, you're 50. Same thing. Technology is affecting you too. Doesn't matter. You must say, but wait a minute, Larry. Doesn't matter. Doesn't affect me. I'm not going to be a driver or a clerk. I'm going to college. I'm super smart. It's not going to affect me. I'm going to get an amazing college degree, right? Well, if you happen to know what's happening on Wall Street right now, there's a whole bunch of layoffs in the finance industry. Anybody happen to know why? Anybody? What's replacing all those cool financial analysts? Computers, AI, exactly right. Artificial intelligence is actually managing and making decisions better than many analysts. And it's cheaper, more accurate and cheaper. AI doesn't ask for a bonus every year. AI doesn't want healthcare. AI doesn't need all those things. All of a sudden they start getting laid off also. And these are educated, smart people who not only are educated and smart, but are aggressive, they think well, gone. This is a serious issue for all of us to consider. And you might say, wait a minute, Larry, now I'm scared. <laughs> Why bother? The machine's taken over, it's the Terminator, it's Skynet. Oh my God, the world's gonna end and we're all in trouble now. Not at all. This has happened before. Anybody, uh, if you think about artificial intelligence, think back in the day when we used to have the, the uh, chess game. Remember, I remember the, some of you people have some gray hair, like me. If you have some gray hair, you remember. When the chess games first came out, the computer, chess games first came out, the computer would most of them lose to the chess master. I remember those days? The chess master used to beat the computer all the time. Then eventually it became a draw, and now almost always, computer beats chess master. Almost always, all the time. What now finally can beat AI? Do you know? No, that's just two AIs. I don't want two AIs. That's a bad idea, really bad idea. Let's make AI take care of AI, take care of AI. Oh my God, right? That's, that's the sci-fi movie when the computers take over the world. What beats AI? Chess master plus AI. That beats AI. Does that make sense? But this happened literally thousands of years ago. Someone figured out if you had a plow, right? You could plow better and farm better. That's awesome. Great. So now I'm good. I've got my plow. Well, let's, let's put a horse to the plow. Well, now the horse pulls the plow. Oh, don't need me anymore because the horse pulls the plow. What's better than a horse pulling a plow? A driver. Yeah. Someone driving the horse. Yeah. Person plus technology beats technology. That happens all the time and it will keep happening. So if you want to, you can get mad and go, AI is going to kill us all. We're all going to die. Or you can say, how do I harness AI? How do I harness that thing? How do I become the driver? Because if I drive it, I can win. How does it affect you in everyday life? We might say, well, Larry, that sounds good. So what I'll do is I'll become a good manager and I'll be fine. I hear this all the time. Some of you may know I've taught in many schools. I've taught at Yale, I've taught at Columbia, Baruch, John Jay, many schools. People say, great, I'll be a manager. Here's a problem. Still to this day, most colleges teach management. You may say, well, that's awesome, isn't it, Larry? No, it's not. Management is actually industrial level management, it's industrial level thought. We are now in a post-industrial world. A post-industrial world means it's no longer about process and resources. That's what management is about, processes and resources. That's nice. But guess what's getting better and better at handling processes and resources? AI. The one thing that we humans do well, and the only thing we can do well, is lead. And I will tell you if you are young and now, and if you're someone who's not a young and, but you're someone who's been a good manager or a good doer, you want to have a future? Your future is not in management. Your future is not doing. Your future is in leading. Is distinction. In today's world, I don't need your arms and legs very much, particularly in America. I don't need that much. They're nice, but I can hire them overseas. I can buy them someplace else. I can get a machine to do that thing. Not that impressed. You know what I need from you? I need your innovation. I need your intellect. I need your initiative. I need your assertiveness. 
I need your ideas. I need your experience. That's what I need from you. Your arms and legs, eh, I'll buy them someplace else. And that sounds terrible, but you're all seeing it happen. You may think I'm crazy. You're all seeing it happen. That means now I have to lead. I need to get people to give me their intellect. How in the world can I get someone to give me their initiative? How can I get someone to give me that enthusiasm? How can I do that? I have to get them to buy in. I have to get them to want to do it. It used to be perfect if I said, okay, Bob, do this. Phil, do that. Jane, do this. Alice, do that. I'm a great leader. Not good anymore. Not going to work at all. Now it's, Bob, take care of that issue. And as I'm talking, that issue is literally changing as I'm speaking. So by the time you get there, it's not what it was when I said go there. So how in the world could I tell you what to do? It's impossible. We've had this happen. You've all seen it, I'm sure. I say, go and do, go to this site and do X. You go to the site, you see it and go, it's not X. It's kind of X plus Y. So what do you do? You do X and come back. And I said, what happened? Why'd you do X? You, you saw it was X plus Y. Do what you said, boss. Do what you said. It's the concept in leadership today of never saying, who told you to do that? But instead saying, why'd you do that? And that might seem like a nuance, but it's huge. It's the difference in assigning blame or assigning responsibility. Blame doesn't help, responsibility does. It's a big difference in how you have to begin to lead. And you as youngsters should start thinking about that. How in the world can I not just be a doer? How in the world can I not just be a manager? But how in the world can I move people? Because the people who are the strongest and who will be the most successful are those who can move people. Those who get others to buy in and say, I'm in, boss. I want it. You might say, but Larry, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be a server. I'm not going to be a driver. I'm not going to be in finance. None of that stuff. It doesn't affect me. I'm going to be a plumber. Awesome. Good for you. That's an amazing thing. World needs plumbers. Please be a plumber. But the same thing applies. I say to you now, hey, you go to Bob or Phyllis's house and fix this type of thing. Well, how are you going to decide what to fix? What are you going to use? Probably technology, aren't you? You're probably going to have some kind of smartphone to talk to me about what's going on. You're probably going to have some type of uh, information on your smartphone on what type of technology is in that house. Technology affects you even if you're a plumber. Well, it doesn't matter if I'm going to be a plumber. Who cares? He's got to I got to fix toilets and stuff. Yeah, but what kind of toilet? I'm not joking. What type? What kind of plumbing do I have? How old is the house? What are the codes that the local zoning uh, uh, said you can or cannot have or do? What do they say? All that will be required somehow on your phone. But Larry, I'm smart. I can remember things. I'm smart. Less and less value. Less and less value. But Larry, I have lots of data. So does Google. It has more than you. And it's more up to date than you are. And it changes without you having to study. Google's smarter than you, no matter how smart you might think you are. Google has more data than you, no matter how much data you think you have. Your goal is, how do I know what to look for? In the future, as you begin to move forward, I do not want you to think, I need to be able to show people how smart I am. Not helpful. Here's what's helpful. I need to show people what information they need. The difference between educating and curating. And the savviest people are able to curate. Because Google gives you everything. The question is, what do you search for? The question is, what data is real? The third question is, what data that I searched for that is real is valid to you, my customer, whoever my customer is. Whether my customer is internal to my boss, internal to my employees, or external to my client. It doesn't matter. That's what I need to be concerned about. Does that make sense, everybody? Am I scaring some of you? Good, don't be scared. If you have any questions, please tell me. I'm happy to hear that. But there are some advantages to this, though. Not only, not only is it good that we can control AI, absolutely, there's other things that happen. AI does something else. It allows us to be more equal. It provides more of an equal playing field. That's an advantage, right? Because you use technology to get around things. Now it's only about the value you can bring. It will make us more equal. It's wonderful. It will actually be equal for, for male to female. 
equal for ethnic backgrounds, more equal for blue collar and white collar. Everything can become more equal. There's an opportunity for us to become more equal. Isn't that great? Yes, no, maybe? There's also an opportunity to fracture us even more. It is both. Because as we make technology and it gets so, so targeted, each of us has their own special, unique media. We have a fractured media and we watch what we want to watch. So while there is an opportunity for us all to be equal because of technology, that's awesome. There's also an opportunity for us all to be divvied up even more, divvied up more and divvied up more. So you as the leaders, the young leaders coming up, you start thinking to yourself, am I doing things that are helping us to become more equal and more fair? Or am I doing things that are helping us to become more divided? And when is that appropriate? Are we okay? Good, I'm on. Good. All right. There is one huge issue though that we have with AI. While it can be wonderful and allow us to curate and make us help, what does AI require? I know what AI requires to be good. How can it be good? What does it require? Data. You got it, big data. Big data is the problem when it comes to AI, big data. Now, why does big data matter? It's good, if we have big data, I get good AI, I get good results. The more data I give my artificial intelligence, the better it will be, the more effective it will be, the more efficient it will be. This is a good thing, isn't it? Yes, great. What's the bad thing? Come on guys, help me out, what's the bad thing? Who controls the data? But who has the data? We don't always know. We don't always know who has all of our data. And not only can I use that data to make the world a better place, I can also use that data to make the world a worse place. I can use that data to manipulate you, can't I? I can use that data to ask you to do things you shouldn't do. Big data is a worry, it is a problem, absolutely. We're concerned about it, as you should be. Not just that, you have all of your data in one spot. What happens if I now get your data? Yes, I now have your data. So once I have your data, what happens if you don't want that data out? That's correct. You will do what I tell you to do, won't you? Or your life is ruined. Either one. You see it happening all the time, don't you? What happens to your point when the data is corrupt? Because the sad part is you know this. When the data is big and awesome, and you see the, the information come from big data, what do we assume? It's true. What happens when it's not true? I control the data and I try to get bad stuff on you, but there's no bad stuff on you. So I just make bad stuff up on you. That's it. Yes, you used to kick puppies when you were seven. That was you. <laughs> Done, I put that in the data, it comes out, people go, oh, he's a puppy kicker. Who are they gonna believe, you or big data? It's big data. Now, why do I say all these things, these fears? Here's the reason why. When this happens, there is going to be, without question, there's going to be a bunch of disruption. It's gonna happen. It's happening here, it's happening across the country, it's happening across the world. So what happens when there's disruption? What do we want? Things are disrupting, what do we do? What do we want? Yes, we do, absolutely. So who can stabilize things fast? Say again? Military. Yes, dictatorships. Boy, can't they. Yes, they can. Let's pass a law. Let's have a dictator. Let's have a strong man because I feel scared. Remember a very important thing in your life. Please remember this always. People who are afraid make bad decisions. Please, I'll say it again. People who are afraid make bad decisions. That includes you, me, anybody. You're afraid you make bad decisions. I'm afraid disruption, I'm gonna make a bad decision. Now here's the problem. Whenever that happens, what's the first thing we say? There ought to be a law. Ought to be a law, that'll fix it. Ought to be a law, and here's the problem. It does work for short term. I'll give you something to really think about as you're trying to think about how do, I hand, how do you handle this disruption? Remember something, at the end of almost every law, as you walk down that road, 
at almost every law at the end is a guy or a gal with a gun who will put you in a cage. No matter what, at the end of that rope, somehow there is a guy or a gal with a gun who will put you in a cage. Which means law is force. Government is law. Government is force. Does that mean I should never use force? No, sometimes you should. Absolutely. If there's a victim, someone's going to be hurt. Absolutely. Yes, of course. There are times to use force. Defend yourself, defend your family, defend your rights. Of course, there are times to use it. Absolutely. The question is, is disruption the right time for force? And here's the problem we're going to have. And this is for you people who are young right now, in the next five or 10 years, as this becomes worse, countries like China are gonna react quickly, very quickly, and it's gonna look amazing because they're gonna have what all laws create, short-term success. Very true, short-term success. But in the long run, they're gonna pay dearly. And the best example I have right now in China is the one-child family, the one-child family policy, remember that? They said, everyone in China can only have one child. Was that a short-term solution? Absolutely. 100%. That was a short-term win. Well done. Less, less population growth. China, what a win. Now, how much are they paying? With 50 to 100 million extra women, and com I mean, um, uh, men compared to women, with huge problems with social issues, certain villages that are three to one, male to women, they're paying a long-term price for a short-term gain but it sounded good when they started it. It will happen here now too. We have a drug problem, marijuana. Let's start a war on drugs. Short-term solution, people go to jail. Now look at the legacy we have now. Again and again and again, when we decide to use force and we think that's the answer, we have a short-term gain and long-term pain. When this disruption hits you, you will be the ones deciding. You'll be the ones voting. You'll be the ones in charge. You will be the ones who will be deciding what we do when this happens. It's the next five or 10 years. How are you going to act? And I would ask you, take the short-term pain for the long-term gain. Anything you've done in life, some of you here who have gray hair like me, everything you've been proud of, that you're so happy you've done, was short-term pain and you got long-term gain from it. Youngsters now, think about that same thing. When it becomes tough, think about it. Short-term pain for long-term gain is the way it works. And what does that mean? That means allowing people to make errors. That means allowing people to find the right answer. It means assuming you don't have every answer. And this goes to my leadership piece. The best leaders know something. The best leaders know they don't have all the answers. They have all the questions. They don't have all the answers. If you think you have to be the smartest person in the room, you're going to fail. Because no matter how smart you are, and I'm sure many of you are very smart, you will never always be the smartest person in the room. And even if you are, you won't have all the information you always need. There's always somebody else there who knows something, who can think of something, who can make something happen. The idea of freedom, as Kevin mentioned, is not just in politics. It is, obviously. But it's also in daily life. It's in your business. Now, some of you might know some of my background. I spent some time training organizations, helping them to grow, helping leaders. And when leaders come to me and say, Larry, my people won't be innovative. They won't be innovative. I can't get them to do things. I don't get it. I tell them to, I order them to, and they don't. I don't understand why they won't be creative. Here's what I never say. You know what you need? Iron fist, more punishment. I never say that ever. Well, I'll just create rules. That's what I'll do. And I'll force them to give me this and to give me that. I'll create more rules. That'll work because then I'll give them more of a box for rules. That'll work. I'll give them a lot of rules. That'll help. I say, no. Then they'll hide behind the rules. If you instead allow your leadership, and for those of you who are starting businesses, those who are getting into uh, other groups, you need to lead people. If you give them freedom to do the right thing, go do it. Here's the goal. Are you with me? Yes, let's go do this thing. You will find your best and motivated leaders will move to the top. And your worst ones will actually also come out as bad leaders, they can't hide behind the policies. People who fail, you give them a second chance, you will find innovation, you will find us to grow. The last piece I'll bring up on the future of the economy. How many people here, students only, how many of you share your homework? Anybody share your homework? Yes, you guys don't share, oh, you don't wanna tell me, it's okay. You share your homework, yes, I know, I have a daughter too, yes. Share your homework, share your homework, yes, you all share your homework, yes. 
Share your homework. How many of you are in high school shared your homework? Yes, shared your homework. Absolutely. 100%. All the time. Yeah. This is a sharing economy. This is a sharing world. And the people who, weren't, who didn't grow up that way think that's weird. I think it's odd. Now the head's nodding. Yes, I think it's odd. What? You share? No, you can't do that. Yes. And I'm asking you, if you're doing it now, remember, this is the concept of no zero-sum game. Everyone shares. This doesn't just work in your high school and in your college, which you're doing already. It works in business, too. It works in life. The sharing economy works. We shouldn't fight it, but we do. We fight Uber. We fight Airbnb. We fight everything that shares. We try to block Facebook. We try our best to block, 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 block. Does it work? No, because someone else always picks it up. Someone else always picks it up because this is the new way. The new way is sharing. And if you people who are a little bit older than the youngsters here, and it may be odd for you, understand that's the future. Sharing is everything. Sharing is the way. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be embarrassed by it. And know you're going to be doing that. And here's the best part about it. The best leaders don't care who gets the credit. The best leaders, their job is to make sure things get done. Not that they do them. Now, some of you also may know, sometimes I actually have been brought into different companies to lead some companies. I've been an officer in public companies twice. I've been an officer in a public company where I don't know what the actual company does very well. How? I do it because I lead well and the people beneath me to get buy-in and to make things work. You empower people and you win. Leadership is all about getting people to buy in, not being the smartest person. Here's the piece that most important for you youngsters. The odds are you will have at least five careers. I didn't say five jobs. At least five careers. I've had five. I've had five careers, not jobs, careers. The odds you have at least five careers. How in the world can you have five careers? How can you master five careers? You can't, and it's okay, because the data is already there for you. Does it make sense? Your job is to curate and gather what you need and to lead others to make things happen. If you lead well, if you curate well, you will easily transition from one career to the next. If you think you have to be an expert in every career, you will struggle. And the reason why you leave careers is not because of opportunity, because of this. You get stuck and you can't advance. So you change careers, you get stuck, you can't advance. You change careers, you get stuck, you can't advance. But if you lead well, you change careers because opportunity is there. This is the thing that makes you just get out of bed and jump because you want to be part of it. What I know most of you youngsters are talking about and thinking about, some of you don't even know, what you want more than anything else is community and purpose. Number one. People always talk about this. You millennials, you guys don't want anything. You guys don't work well. I hear that all the time, and they're wrong because I've seen you work in nonprofits, and I've seen you work so hard that you literally sleep under the desk. Yes, literally sleep under the desk. Don't shower. You should shower, by the way, but don't shower. Get back to work. Work that hard and get paid virtually nothing, just a living wage. You don't care because you've got your backpack or your Netflix subscription, so you're good. And you go back, if you're in New York City, you have six roommates and you're fine with it because you're doing something that matters. And you're good about that. I get that. Some of us who are gray hair, we don't get that. We wanted community and we wanted purpose too. But if we didn't get it, we didn't quit our jobs. You guys will. You'll just walk away. And you have three, four, five, six, seven jobs. What I'm asking you, if you're a youngster, look for that purpose now. You're gonna have five careers. You should be working on your first one right now. Physically working on your first one right now. This is the last piece I'll touch in this whole piece and I'll take as many questions as you like. If you are 16 years or older and not actively somehow working in a job or a corporation or a nonprofit or something, you are cheating yourself. You need to be in something, around someone, doing something, getting experience. But Larry, I'm gonna I'm have a cool degree, so what? So what? I don't care. I know people who have degrees from Ivy League and the baristas at Starbucks, Manhattan. I'm not joking. Some of you know people like that. Master's degrees, baristas at Starbucks. 
I'm going to tell you a little trend that's happening in, in the tech field specifically, but also growing in the marketing field. And that is, if you have a master's degree, if you're a small, if this is a small business, they will not hire you. You are no hire. They will literally say, ah, too much, no hire. They haven't done anything. It's been all the time in school, done anything, no hire. This does not at all apply to large corporations, academia, or government. Academia, government, large corporations love lots of education. If you plan on working there, please get lots of education. If you love that stuff, please do it. It's a great idea. If you're looking for something small, tiny, don't get education. Get your bachelor's degree, wonderful, but get experience. If you don't have experience with your degree, you're not gonna be hireable if you wanna be in a small company. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't be in one. I'm saying find your passion now, start your first career, your second or third one will come. Are we okay? So I hope I wasn't too scary, but I wanted you guys to know that what I love about it is you guys are making lots of changes, a lot of stuff is happening, but you're gonna be in charge soon. Don't take the short-term option, take the long-term option. Thank you.